Hello, I'm Brother Chang Ho Yu. I'm here because there's one very special place I'm going to introduce to you today. The place is called Yang Hua Jin. Yang Hua Jin is the name of a village in Hapcheongdong, Mapogu, Seoul. Yang Hua means floral leaf of willow. 600 years ago, during the Joseon dynasty, this place was the way for many ships like merchant ships, fishing boats, and vessels from three provinces called Gyeongsangdo, Jeollado, and Chungcheongdo to enter Namdaemun, the gate of central Seoul. Currently, 145 missionaries are buried in this place, Yang Hua Jin. Among them, there are graves of 90 missionaries and 55 family members. So I would like to introduce you to each and every one of the missionaries who have been buried here. When the missionaries were preaching, Joseon was considered a very undeveloped country in the view of Westerner, and they called Joseon the end of the earth. But surprisingly, it is also in Joseon that many things have happened where you can feel the providence of God. Then everyone, why did these missionaries abandon all their wealth and honor in their country and came to Joseon which they had never seen or heard before to preach the gospel? While I studied the stories of missionaries buried in Yang Hwajin, Joseon was a very special country and I could feel what God had prepared for Joseon. Thus, I'd like to tell you the story of missionaries buried in this Yang Hwajin and think about them one by one. From now on, let me introduce you to each and every missionary. The first missionary is John W. Heron. John Heron graduated with first class honor from University of Tennessee School of Medicine. The reason why he dreamed of missionary work in Joseon was because he heard the report of Joseon missionary work in university. Thus he prayed to God to send him to Joseon. Lord, please let me finish my studies and use me as a medical missionary in Joseon as your tool. He prayed like this. Missionary Heron finally graduated from university and had a meeting with the head of the department. The head of the department said, You've graduated with the highest grade since our school established. So we decided to give you a teaching position after an internal meeting. I think you are going to get paid quite a lot. After hearing the news, Missionary Heron answered right there, No. So the dean of the department was really surprised. Why? Is there any problem? John Heron answered, I'm going to preach the gospel to Joseon. Then the head of the department said, Oh really? You, John, have a very good faith. Before the meeting, John Heron had prayed to the Lord he was able to make this decision, to keep his promise before God. After his decision, he walked out of the school building. At that moment, his best friend followed him and grabbed him and says, John, I've heard about your news. Don't you want to be a famous and respected doctor in this country? Let's just work hard for the gospel in New York with me. Then John Heron replied, I don't want to be a famous doctor in the earth. I want to be a famous doctor before God and in heaven. I will soon go to Joseon. After answering to his friend, he went to New York Harbor and boarded the ship. After crossing the Pacific Ocean through Okinawa in Japan and Busan Harbor in southern Joseon, he arrived in Yang Hwajin after three months. This usually takes two months without a typhoon. Anyway, John Heron got off a ship and entered the center of capital through south gate of Seoul. As soon as he arrived in Joseon, he went to Gwanghaewon. Gwanghaewon. I guess you've heard about it. This is the first western-style hospital in Korea. He came to Gwanghaewon and worked as a personal physician of Emperor Gojong. However, 
His prayer to God was not meant to treat the emperor in Joseon. That's why he put a stethoscope in his back and treat people in Joseon outside normal working hours in Gwanghaewon. He continued to treat and preach the gospel. At the time in Joseon, preaching of Christianity was illegal. So if missionaries were caught while preaching the gospel, government decapitated and hung up their head. So John Heron sneaked around to evangelize. Then one day, he ate the food that Joseon people gave and got dysentery. Dysentery is a disease that causes diarrhea and eventually die from exhaustion. When he came to Joseon as a missionary in 1885, he was 28 years old. However, five years after he came to Joseon, he died of dysentery at the age of 33. After his death, the U.S. legation asked the Joseon government to prepare a graveyard for John. So they hurriedly decided to settle for the terrace land on Han River as his graveyard. However, the Joseon government prepared a new place as the U.S. legation replied that the location is not suitable for a graveyard. And that new place is Yang Hwajin. After a long time when John Heron was first buried in Yang Hwajin, this place was officially named Yang Hwajin Foreign Missionary Cemetery. After John died, his diary was found, and this was written in the diary. I've always had a concern in my life. How can I please the Lord? That was my biggest concern. This is what it says in his diary. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, Not with the blood of gods and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Because we were saved by the blood of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts just like Heron missionaries. John Heron's lesson to us is this. He gave up everything that he had, such as money, good living condition, and others, and came to the strange land of Joseon, which he never heard or seen. Then he devoted himself to the Lord. I hope you learned some lessons from his life to consider how you should live in these last times before Jesus' second coming. This was the story of John W. Heron. Thank you.